Hey, so here's another Haskell kata. Uh, the last video went well, so I wanted to do a new one and let's see, I hope you enjoy it. And with the excuse of doing another kata, uh, we're going to explain folds and guards and hopefully even list comprehensions in Haskell. So let's have a look at this challenge now. If we list all the natural numbers below 10 that are multiples of 3 or 5, we get 3, 5, 6 and 9. The sum of those is 23. So that's what we need to do. So that looks good. So let's begin with. I would say in Haskell we can create ranges of numbers like this. We want to say from 1 to number minus 1. We're going to create a list of numbers. Okay. And then if we try out this, we get our list of 9. Perfect. And now we're going to need a function that is going to be the key to solve this that we, I'm going to call is multiple of 3 or 5. And it's going to take an integer, integer and return another one. And we're going to define this using a Haskell guard, which I think it's a very nice syntax. So, if the modulus of x is 3, then we're going to return x. Why? Because in the cases that are 3 or 5, we want to return the number itself so that we can then iterate through this list of return numbers and turn it into a sum of values. So, we have two operations, basically, in this challenge. We need to generate a list, we need to filter out somehow the numbers in which we're interested in, and finally we have to fold them into one single value, we have to sum them. Okay, and we can achieve this, doing the same, by 3, and finally we're going to say that, other, that otherwise we're going to return 0, because those numbers within our range that are not multiples of 3 or 5, we don't want to sum them. So, nice, we're one step further. What we are going to do now is to use fold. Um, you might have been familiar with fold, let's see. So fold is basically a function which takes a foldable, which is a structure that we can fold or reduce to, and if you notice we need a, fu a function, an initial value, and finally the foldable structure we want to fold, and it's going to return what we want. So we need to say that we're going to use fold r because of Haskell's laziness is always uh, more performance to fold right from the right side because of the way of Haskell's funks work. This solution is not going to be important whether we traverse this list from the right or from the left because it's going to be a sum so we really don't need to use fold left or fold right we can use any of those and it's going to not affect the solution of our problem so if you can choose between fold r fold l and fold r use fold r and if not you can also use fold l but prime and take it from data foldable because that is going to be more, more performant we're going to need the function and then our initial value, since we're going to sum all of them, is going to be zero. So this function is the aggregator, so to speak, or the function that we're going to use to reduce our list of values. So you might have been guessing that we need to use this, the function plus, so we're going to sum. But we need to use our beautiful is multiples of three functions. So let's try that out. So I say that we're going to use the plus function, but I need to also apply our beautiful is multiples of three or four function. Nice, so looks like we have a solution. Let, let's try it out. Okay, solution of 10 is 23. Solution of 100 is 2,318. And solution of 200 is 9,000. So let's see if this coincides. Nice, so it seems like we're good to go. Let's try out our solution. 
And as always, let's see what's the best aboted, the most aboted solution in in Code Wars to surprise ourselves. Okay, it passed all the tests. I finally submit. Beautiful. We made it. So I hope you enjoyed the guards and faults and you understood it. And if you have any doubt, please also add a comment in the uh, YouTube video and then maybe I will explain something better next time. Wow. So what was the best solution? Okay. Yes, of course. So instead of all the logic that we were doing, <laughs> we could solve this problem also using just simple list Haskell comprehension, which they are magic, by the way. Okay, so let's take this beautiful moment to explain Haskell's list comprehensions. So basically, Haskell's comprehensions go this way. We have an input expression here, well, an output function here. We have here an input function, and then we have conditions. Okay, so how can we achieve this? Well, basically, we're going to comment this out as well. And I'm going to say that I just need an X here. Our input function is going to be the same that we were using before. We're going to generate a list from one to number minus one. And let's see what happens now. We're going to ignore this condition. Um, yes, so I need the syntax is like this. Nice. Redundant list comprehensions. Okay, I know. <laughs> Thank you, Hlin. <laughs> Let's see where we are now. So we say solution of 10. We are just generating and returning the numbers from 1 to 9. Okay. But now, if we apply the conditions here and we say um, x module of 3 should be fa f 0 and module of 5 should be 0 as well, then OK, what went wrong? Uh, yes, it's that's one condition and this is or this is the our other condition. Perfect. So now we are generating the correct list. We are generating the numbers from 1 to 9 and filtering out those who are not members of this. So this generates perfectly our list. And now we need the function sum. So where is the fold here? Well, the fold is inside sum because sum takes a foldable of some numbers and returns finally the number. So when we apply sum to our list comprehension, we get back where we are waiting for, what we're expecting. Nice. Awesome. So this is basically list comprehensions in Haskell. They are very, very powerful. They're very, very nice. I hope you enjoy them. And if you want also more explanations, hit like, subscribe in this video, and maybe I'll create, I'll solve another kata, kata, kata doing um, beautiful list comprehensions in Haskell. So until next time.